Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 13, Async, coming from the previous episode where we spoke about modules. So Async, or Async.io in Python, and Async Await in uh, Rust, is basically just a easier way to write the non-blocking execution of uh, multiple tasks that usually wait for like input output uh, from a database, from a web server, or some other stuff that is not as fast as current uh, CPU and uh, memory is. And uh, this concept allows you to much easier deal with these issues. You don't have to create like your own uh, threading, multi-threading code that calls other callbacks and whatnot. You can actually write it in a way that is similar how you would write normal structured code. And then it actually with the executor that is provided to you by the language, it will run in uh, parallel if you wish, or within uh, the constraints that you give the code. So Python has this already for a long time, since version 3.4 officially, and uh, before in uh, the Twisted library, they provided a way to write asynchronous code for an uh, even much longer time, from 2002 already on onwards. And uh, Rust has this edit since uh, their version 1.39, and that's about uh, November 2019. And since then, uh, the community has been very active, developing uh, libraries that make use of this. The async standard library is basically trying to write everything that is currently in the standard library using the async paradigm. At least this is my understanding of what they are trying to achieve. Then uh, Tokyo is uh, more battle tested and uh, really used in uh, real world uh, big applications. And uh, they do not try to really copy everything of the standard library and uh, try to make it fit into the async model. They do this where this makes uh, sense. And then last but not least, we have uh, Small that seems to be more like a small hobby project that found uh, lots of fans and is still actively developed and uh, kind of like a small, easy to use version for asynchronous code. Let's hop over to the code to get a feel of uh, what this does. In our two languages, again, on the left, uh, Python, on the right, we have the same thing written in Rust. So what's happening here is in Python, you would have to import the async.io standard library. If you look on the right, then you have here this async standard and the futures. Both of these have to be provided in your uh, cargo toml as modules. This is not coming with Rust uh, by default because you can uh, replace async standard by Tokyo by example or small or maybe yet another library that I don't know of yet. Um, on the left we can now see in Python we have the async to define a function being asynchronous. Then, uh, then we just use def as we normally would for a function. We give it a name, in this case a. And our function does not a lot. It uh, prints something, then it sleeps, which is already using asynchronous uh, code. Then it prints again that it finished uh, waiting and uh, returns the value, one. Here you can see that uh, async and await are keywords in Python. And this await means that the future task generated by this asyncio sleep is being awaited to be finished before we continue with our code here. And uh, this basically means that we have print hello, wait three seconds, print waited, and then return a value. In Rust on the right, this is very similar. We use async to denote that this uh, function is uh, asynchronous. Then we use fn as we do for functions, we give it the name a. We declare the return type and, uh, well, we print hello, same thing. And here I use the full qualifier to not have to import um, this at the top. We have async standard. There is a task module that has the sleep function. And this takes a standard time duration. We build it from seconds. So also here we wait for three seconds. The syntactic difference is here we use dot await at the end to await this uh, sleep task. And on the left, it's written at the beginning 
to denote that this is awaiting the finishing of this task. Afterwards, uh, print line is a known and the return is one. And uh, we continue with the second uh, much easier code. So the async function b just prints uh, world to say hello world in the end and returns two. Then we enter our uh, main. This is also asynchronous. And we only use this main function to then call it down here with the async.io runner. This makes it a more readable code. And what I do at the beginning is I run the two functions in a serial fashion, as you would uh, if you were had written these two functions and didn't use async at all. This basically would uh, do the same. Then we have the option to use the async.io's uh, gather function. And uh, this allows us to run both in parallel. And uh, this is often called uh, to join two functions, two asynchronous functions. And at the end, uh, we assert that the result of those two is uh, one and two, because we call it in the order a, b. A returns one and the B returns two. On the left, uh, this big code block here is basically just uh, implementing uh, this race method call. So what we get here is uh, a future back from A, then we call the race method on it and let it race with uh, the method, uh, with the function B that we created. What race does is the first one that finishes cancels the other uh, future. So if uh, B finishes first, then A will be canceled. If A finishes first, B will be canceled and the result will only be the first one and that finished. And this whole term has to be awaited. Um, sometimes this race is called uh, select. You can sometimes find this as a macro in some other async libraries in Rust. And then uh, we print the result for raised. This does not really exist in Python, at least not that I know of. So I copied um, the, the same idea behind all of this. So what you have to do is you call the async IO wait, then you give it a list or an iterable of the tasks you want to wait for. Then we create a task from our async uh, functions, A and the B. And then we have to use this uh, special return when async IO first completed. This will then give you the ones that are done and the ones that are pending as iterables. And this means that you then can go through all the pending ones, so the ones that haven't finished yet, and you can cancel them. This is what the race does for you automatically. And afterwards we get the first result because it could be that those two have exactly the same uh, speed you can have a more than one result, but since <clears throat> we want to copy the race, we will only get the first one in the list. And then we have the same result there. And then we can also use gather. This will then simply run all the futures at the same time. And this is also what uh, um, a thread join would do for you. In Rust, I will go out of the picture. We have the same thing. We built ourselves a vector of our futures, but we cannot mix a vector with um, different uh, future types. So B would return a different future type than A. And if you want to mix that, we will have to tell the compiler that this is behind a smart pointer. So the smartest one that we can uh, come up with for this is a box. And if we pin it, it will only be in uh, one location in memory. And uh, this whole code block that you can see here is fairly long to write, but luckily the async, uh, the futures extension. So futures, futures ext, I implemented here as boxed ext because we need the future ext for example, this uh, race method. Um, so now the trait of boxed ext is uh, giving us the boxed method that then helps us uh, create this 
um, return type to build us a vector of futures that have uh, different signatures. And then we get to join all. This I imported here also from uh, futures. And uh, this will uh, join all futures. I wait them and we expect the result because we called the B first, then A and then B again. And in the end, we have our joined vector. Okay, let's run this in uh, Python. And you can see here in the serial version, we have the hello. It waits for three seconds. It prints the weighted goes world. Then uh, when we run them in parallel, you can see that hello is printed world already because we wait now, then weighted and the joined. Then for the race, so this is uh, our race. It will uh, print hello and world, but you know, world finishes and returns uh, two immediately. So we cancel the waiting of the hello function that would want to print weighted after it's slept. But since it is uh, canceled here, we do not get the weighted output that we expect here. We get right away the done and we get only the result uh, two because this is the first one done that has us giving has, has given us the two. And at the very bottom, we run uh, the three in parallel. So of course we get uh, the world printed, the hello printed, the world again, but we wait for hello to finish. So it waited and then we get our vector output. And uh, this way you can uh, control with async IO what is uh, happening in which order and uh, writing all of these uh, three variants on your own using multi-threading is of course possible, but it's much harder to read um, for another programmer, for example, coming in. What you can see here is the structured programming that you know, and it's easy to understand what is going on because you know you're awaiting something here and uh, the gather will do what uh, you expect. It does many things at the same time. You can even pass lists by simply deconstructing here into many arguments. This is only the async I will run, only exists in uh, Python 3.7 plus, but since this episode is recorded in 2021, this should be easily available on your distribution of choice. Now let's hop over to uh, what uh, Rust does. In Rust, we would have to jump over to our project and you can see that we have the cargo toml file. This gives us a way that we can use uh, cargo. So let's uh, do it. We use cargo run and we get the same behavior. We get hello, it waited, then world. Then we have hello world and waited. Then uh, the race where the hello is not getting to print the weighted and we get the two back and here we have the same outcome as before. So it is uh, just as easy to use as in Python. It is very powerful, um, giving us way more performance than Python can. The conclusion is that it's very easy to write Rust code that is asynchronous just as it is in Python. In fact, these two codes are equivalent and they have the very same length in lines. So both of them have 34 lines, fit the same page, do the same thing. That's uh, usually not the case in Rust. Normally you have to write the more code, but async is uh, very well thought out and uh, very enjoyable to write in Rust. High performance as well. So I hope uh, you will enjoy using that on uh, your part. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the From Python to Rust series will be context managers.